Hello and welcome to Game Brigade. I am Brian and today we're taking a look at 10 games that surprised me for one way or another. Uh, I wanted to do this list because I, a lot of these games uh, hit me in a way that I thought was interesting and memorable and I thought it might be fun to make a list of the games that had an impact me, impact on me in some way or another. So if that sounds interesting to you, please stay tuned for more. All right, welcome guys. So we're gonna be taking a look at some of these games right now. Before we get into that, if you can take a moment to like the video, it really helps. I appreciate everyone who has liked my videos. Uh, and then we're gonna go into the games. First off, uh, there's no particular order in terms of these. It's not uh, a top 10 list in terms of the best games. Just 10 games that had an impact on me in one way or another. So, first game, because it's the closest game. Moonrakers by IV Studios, and this game is uh, was a first time publisher, so I kind of took a risk when I backed this game. I generally uh, am more leery of first time publishers, and their game was more expensive than I think what was included in this. Moonrakers is a deck building game, competitive deck building game, but the key twist to this one is that you are going to be uh, acting cooperatively with other players uh, as you go on missions together to complete the tasks to gain more resources or victory points. So I thought that was an interesting take in terms of how being in the competitive game where we're all working against each other, but we have to work together to be able to further our goals. I thought that was an interesting take. And this one surprised me for that reason. I thought when I originally got this that it was either going to be incredibly fun or a dull, dull game. Uh, so when I played it for the first time, the amount of laughing and enjoyment we had as a group solidified to me that this is a hit. Now I don't know if it's based on player group in terms of like how you moderate it i do think so when i play this game i make sure that for the very first mission i'm very active in like getting people to go on the onto the missions or joining in and doing the uh negotiations part of it and i think that helps if you are in a group that maybe isn't as vocal i could see this maybe being a flop but that is um personally the thing I do to make this game more successful within our player groups and I've played this I think with at least four different groups at this point and it's all been successful very fun to be able to play a game that has a weird competitive slash cooperative element to it and this was my first game that had that kind of an element and it really surprised me I really enjoyed it so it opened my eyes that there can be parts of that uh, I guess gameplay types that are good so Let's take a look at this game, Deep State, the New World Order. And this one is by Crow D Games or Crowd D Games. I don't know how they pronounce it. And I, and I remember when I reviewed this game, I was like, I don't know how they pronounce the name of this game. Um, this game is a basically Cold War era, 1980s-esque spy game where players will be taking on roles as agents as they try to um, basically spread propaganda, go on counterterrorism missions, uh, or you know, set up your own guerrilla warfare or terrorist acts, but you're doing it as the government. So it kind of has kind of a conspiracy theory-esque theme to it. And I went into this one a little leery in terms of the, the theming, but it really worked well. I really like the art. I liked the play style. It's a worker placement game where you're placing your agents in different locations. Uh, and there is a mechanic where you can actually place more workers in a spot to outbid someone. So you have to have a, you know, an idea of how much do I want to invest in this, but also not over invest. So you don't have to spend turns and money replacing your workers really good game enjoyed it hard to find i haven't seen this one in a retail store in a while and it was on amazon for a while too that's 
so if you can find it, I recommend giving it a shot, especially if you're like, you know, that kind of sci-fi, not sci-fi, but like fantasy uh, government conspiracy stuff. You, if your player group is into that kind of thing, might be fun. I really enjoyed it. So that is Deep State by Crow D Crowd Games, something like that. Let's do, let's do this one. Oh, Twilight Imperium 4. Just the lid today because last time I brought up this game, uh, I spilt everything all over the place and it was a big mistake. So figured we're just going to do the lid today. Twilight Imperium 4 surprised me uh, because it was a game that I didn't think I could sit through and enjoy as much as I did being an eight, eight to 10 hour game. And it showed me that time can basically be a null and void thing in a board game uh, if it's good enough. If the game is good enough and it can uh, absorb you into it, really, it's it, it, the time is not an issue. It's something like that, guys. You, you understand what I'm saying, right? You get what I'm trying to put down. Uh, Twilight Imperium is a 4X game. Whoa, that's the problem with just having the, the lid. Uh, Twilight Imperium is a 4X. Oh my gosh. I'm trying to like tip it a little bit so you guys can see it better. I don't know if I'm doing it right though. Uh, basically, you will be selecting a faction. I can't remember how many factions are in the base game. It's like 14 or 15. It's a good amount of factions. And you are going to be building a galaxy. There's pre-made galaxies. You can also do a drafted galaxy. And you are going to be basically ruling your nation, vying for power and uh, supremacy against the other players. And it is in a galaxy formation that's a, it's basically a circle. Uh, so everything will be funneling to the middle, which is, uh, the, you know, the main planet, which has the most influence for players. And so there is a, uh, a direct reason to have conflict in this game. The only complaint I had with Twilight Imperium is that sometimes players will uh, be less inclined to make aggressive moves you will sit there for six hours and have the longest cold war because neither player wants to be the person that draws the first line of action or blood. Uh, I am very much okay with attacking people if it suits my, um, my needs at the time, you know, I will hold alliances and party lines as long as I need to. But you know, if I need to attack you, I will attack you. And I don't, and I think that was something that really bothered me about Twilight Imperium. This is a tangent. It really doesn't matter. But that's just my my, <laughs> my initial tangent. But in terms of a game that is probably a lot of people don't play because of the time commitment of this one, I think uh, if you are able to get a weekend and get a single day, we usually do it on a Saturday, and say, you know, we're going to set up uh, eight hours to be able to play this game, highly recommended because the time will go by quickly. Soon it'll be five hours in and you're really having a good time and you'll be like, man, I didn't realize I could do this. And that's what happened to me when I played Twilight Imperium for the first time. So let's put that over there. Okay. War of the Ring. This is my fantasy flight version. And this game surprised me because it was the first board game in recent memory that I could remember that when I played it for the first time, made me feel like I was a kid again. I, I, as we're playing it, we're reciting movie lines and we were having so much fun. Basically in this game, it's a two player, it says two to four, really it's a two player game where one player will be taking on the forces of uh, Shadow for Sauron. The other player will be the free people. So you'll be the humans, elves and dwarves. And it's a battle, f War of the Ring, it's Lord of the Rings. And what's interesting about this one is that the free people also have a mini game where they have the ring bears where they're trying to throw the ring into Mount Doom to, I think it's Mount Doom, Mordor, uh, to basically destroy the ring or they can do a military battle. And at the same time, Sauron is searching for the ring and also trying to destroy the free people. And one of the coolest mechanics in this game is that the free people, when you lose units, they are not put back into your reinforcements to recruit later. They are gone forever. You place them back in the box. While Sauron's forces, when they're lost, they're just put back to the side and can be used again. And that puts a real strain on the free people to understand that you cannot win 
you know, straight up combats all the time. You have to think outside the box. You have to think guerrilla tactics and, 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 and choose your battles wisely or fall back and defend the line when you can. Really, really great game. Incredibly thematic. And I think that's what really wanted me to put this on the list because of the thematic nature. I'm a very big thematic player. I love mechanics. But if a theme is on point, it really wins extra points for me. And this was there. The cards that you play are very in line with either the books and or the movies. You know, the movies are very close to the books in, in some ways. Uh, so very, very good. And would recommend this for everyone. Uh, at least once, try it. Again, the reason this one surprised me is because it really made me feel like I was a kid again. And if I'm playing board games and I can capture that experience at least once, uh, it's, a, it's a hit for me. And... While I haven't necessarily had that same feeling in the subsequent playthroughs, I've still enjoyed every play I've had. So, War of the Ring by Fantasy Flight. Uh, second edition is out now, if you can look for that. This is the first edition. Okay. Caverna. I want to be careful not tipping this up too much because I opened this up for this video just before I filmed, and it was just all over the place. We have an insert in here, and it was just a mess. So this is Caverna, the Cave Farmers. I'm actually gonna put it down so I don't have to clean it again. But this game is surprising to me because, again, I just mentioned with War of the Ring, theme is important for me, and more so than I think a lot of players. And this game is about you playing a dwarf, and you're farming, and you're either farming the land or you're farming the cave, so the Cave Farmers. And I was like, that sounds incredibly stupid. How fun is a game? about farming as dwarves but this game's uh mechanics and overall gameplay is incredible basically players will be taking on a family of dwarves and you're either going to be you can farm both sides you can farm outside where you're going to get sheep and and donkeys and cattle and dogs or you can go into the mines and try to get more ore and rubies and everything will have different types of victory points the way you want to go. And what I really, really liked about Caverna was the different paths that players could do each game that worked in terms of trying to get a, a win. There wasn't, at least that we were able to find, a single best strategy, which whenever you're playing a worker placement type game, if there's a single best strategy, I don't like that kind of mechanics. So I like having the options of choosing different paths every time, and Caverna has done that very well for us. Um, in terms of the worker placement, I also liked that the, t the board, as you progress through the different uh, times, the 12 different turns, you're adding more worker spots. And so uh, the, the spots become valuable and so there are specific spots that are usually more highly desired, either going on dungeon runs or getting certain types of resources. And if a resource is not taken, the turn that uh, we're all selecting spots, it will generate more resources because it'll make it more valuable for subsequent turns. So it's really, really important, uh, really good way in terms of how they balance the worker placement spots. So really highly recommending that game. I was turned off originally because the cave farmer, uh, but to be honest, it's a, it's a great game. Okay. Too Many Bones by Chip Theory Games. And this one surprised me. I don't know how I would best describe it. When I bought Too Many Bones and when I got into it, I really didn't have a good idea of what the game was even about. Um, I heard it was a dice building game, but not like a normal dice building game. And um, I didn't know anything about it other than you potentially go on dungeons. And so when I got it, it was actually very much different than what I anticipated, and I very much enjoyed it. In fact, it has become one of my favorite games to play. In fact, this is just a holder now for a bunch of uh, components that come with the game, and I have the all-in uh, behind me, the Trove Chest, which you can see at times. And uh, in Too Many Bones, players will be picking up a gear lock, who are these little characters in the front, and you'll be basically going on an adventure. And these adventures are effectively one-shot adventures. They're about two hours long for each adventure, where at the end of the path, you'll have a, a main enemy that you are going against. And through the adventure, you're gonna be revealing cards, which will tell you what kind of encounter you're experiencing on each day. 
And when I say each day, uh, every enemy will have a specific amount of days you have to complete the task. So you might have eight days or you might have 13 days. And the longer the mission, the more difficult it is, but the more opportunity you have to leveling up your characters. And what I thought was really great was when you're usually playing a uh, dungeon crawler game, you're just anticipating that every day you're going to go on a dungeon run and you're going to be doing some minions. But with what Too Many Bones offers is the choices for players to make, which has alternative options for you. You could reveal a card and it will say uh, you can, uh, it'll say something like your party has uh, found a river. You can cross the river, forge across the river. And if you do that, you gain two experience points or you can look for a path down the road. Uh, and if you do that, maybe shuffle a card into the deck and gain only one experience point. And that counts as a day. So I thought that was really interesting that it offers different options. Or sometimes you'll encounter a card and you have the option to actually go to combat and fight combat. And you can see what kind of rewards you're going to get. Or maybe you want to try an alternative path to skip combat in this situation. So Too Many Bones was one of those games that surprised me because it really didn't feel like when I bought it, I didn't really have an idea of what I was getting into. And it turned out to be an incredibly thematic, not thematic, incredibly uh, thematic. I, I said thematic so many times with Lord of the Ring, it's ingrained in my head. Uh, in, incredibly engrossing game, very fun to play, uh, a very high components, a little expensive. Um, but if you have the ability to at least get the base game and see it for yourself, I think you would enjoy it. It's a very, very good game. Brass, Birmingham, uh, who makes this game? Boxley, I believe? Roxley. Roxley Games. This game is basically uh, a Euro game on steroids in terms of an economic masterpiece. I got this game for the Board Game Geek Christmas uh, uh, Secret Santa. This is what my Santa sent me. And... Uh, when I finally got a chance to play this, I was so incredibly impressed with how well this game not only blends in the theme of a uh, 18th century um, economic England, but with very clean mechanics. In Brass Birmingham, players are going to be taking on a historic leader, and you are going to be going around uh, to different towns in the area, uh, placing down uh, iron factories or beer factories or, or textile factories, basically building your empire in the Industrial Revolution. And then there are two different ages in this game. You have the uh, first age, which consists of traveling along the canals, and you have to be able to have a route to a, a, a selling location to sell your items to get the points. And so you players are also having to work towards that. But then at some point when the deck runs out, you are going to be converting to the railroad uh, era, which is uh, very expensive, but it, it, it rewards players with proper playing and good economy building. Very, very good game. A little... Um, more euro if you look at the, the games i have here i'm very much not a euro player i very much enjoy the thematic games and storyline games but i can appreciate a game that has very good mechanics and brass birmingham is one of those games that if you pick it up and you're a mechanically inclined player if you're a thinker player this is a great pickup for you Spirit Island. Uh, this one is one that surprised me about how much I didn't like it. Kind of a twister there. I picked this up and I also picked up the expansion. I think it's Branch and Claw. It's inside here. And uh, I bought all that because of the amount of hype and uh, things I heard about this game. And when I played it, I did not fall in love with this game. In Spirit Island, players will be taking on the role of an elemental uh deity that's on this planet or this planet this island and you are going to be defending your island from uh colonizers basically people who are coming to colonize 
and uh, live on the planet, but they're are on the planet again, the island, but they're not doing it in a very nice way. And so you are defending your home territory. What I, I the game is very brutal and I don't mind challenges, but when the group as a whole does not have fun because they feel like they're constantly getting beat down. It's a similar problem I have with the games like Nemesis, but I give Nemesis a pass because of the theme. Um, this one I didn't I didn't quite pass as well for me. The th it's a very very hard game. I haven't gotten rid of it because I'm hoping that maybe in time it will rub right for me. But in terms of how much I was disappointed with the overall gameplay and the overall difficulty scaling, this one was a game that surprised me with how much I didn't like it. And that was number nine. And so the final game that surprised me was Destinies by Lucky Duck Games. And Destinies is an app-driven game, and that's what surprised me about this one, is how much I would actually enjoy and uh, be able to uh, let myself uh, be engrossed in a story that is as app driven as Destiny's is. This is Lucky Duck um, has really focused on app driven games lately, and um, I've gotten their Chronicles of Crime series, which uh, is app driven, but it didn't feel as app driven to me, at least, as Destiny's did. In Destiny's, players will be choosing one of three different characters in a scenario where you will be going around searching for your destiny and you have an option of going after the good or bad destiny and that's what other players are going to be doing as well and this game i would say is competitive but it has a cooperative feel to it at times but it at its core it's truly a competitive game there was parts of that which i didn't care for especially if you had overlapping destinies with another player and they ended up getting some of the components prior to you. It made the game have some feel bad moments. But overall, I enjoyed the story. I enjoyed the experience. And what I think is most exciting about this game is what potential options Lucky Duck can do with the system they've built here. I think Destinies offers a lot of opportunities for uh, a, a lot of great things to come forward. And so this one is one that I'm looking forward to seeing more of in the Destiny's line. And that's it. So hopefully this was an interesting list for you guys to take a look at and uh, see if there's anything out there that might be overlapping with your own collection. Let me know what you guys think. Is there any games out there that surprised you? Let me know in the comment section down below. Again, if you really want to support my channel, I would really like it if you gave me a like. It definitely helps the YouTube algorithm. And of course, it shows that people out there are enjoying my content. Otherwise, this is Brian from Game Brigade. I will talk to you all very soon.